Hello everyone, we're back with Fate Grand Order with the Olympus chapter, almost said Atlantis, it's not Atlantis, it's Olympus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, last time we killed Demeter, it's been like a week since I did that, uh, I've been busy. But first, you know, I'm just here for that dopamine, that's what we all want, right? You know, the 5 star ticket came out, really there's two servants that's considering, Tamamo, until, you know, Atoria Castro comes out, or, you know, if I don't get her. But I think, I think more than Tamamo, I want Anastasia. Who is both a very cute girl and a very good servant. Yeah, so, no, yeah. Are there 25 available? Let's just, you know. I have most of these, I don't have Shang Yu. But I don't really want them. Consort use mine. <laughs> uh, like, I don't really... I think there's anyone else like I really need. Like I have most of these. And Kidu would be cool, but Or Arjuna, I guess. I don't have Mordred. But I have most of these. Like I think I'm missing like maybe seven or eight? Or maybe a little more. I don't have but anyway. Anastasia it is. What Anastasia to my present box? She will temporarily join until I level her up and get her bond up, I think. Do I get her summon message? No? Really? Maybe I don't get the summon message until I get her stuff up. But just wanna yeah, she's locked, okay. There she is. So yeah, I don't have that much XP saved up, but that's what the event's for. Anyway, I think this one's a shorter one, which is why I've kind of done this. <laughs> Oh, I would have done this anyway, but because it's a short one, I can't do it. So, records fragment. Yeah, so this isn't like a numbered one for some reason. I'm hoping this is just like every character going, NANI, THEY DEFEATED A GOD? How's that possible? I, I live for that kind of stuff. Like when an enemy over underestimates you and then they realize, Oh no, I underestimated them. Well, that might not even be the case with Kristaria. Well, maybe a little. It's windy. Why has it been so windy lately? If anyone were to ask when my life changed, I know exactly what I'd tell them. Springtime, when I was 15. That said, this isn't the kind of thing you're going on telling people about. Oh, I guess I should take it to my grave. Now, I don't know who this is. Back then, I was enrolled in the Astromancy. Okay, it's Kristaria. Department of the Clock Tower. AKA the Majors Association's headquarters. As the 13th heir to the Woldheim legacy, the child who had been granted the protection of the stars. I was said to possess the greatest magical circuits of any Woldheim to date. And that I was a genius who had already been promised the keys to the Woldheim family in a few years time by the 11th head of the estate, who led the family even now. The old guy. Poor 12th guy. Those were the sorts of things everyone else would say about me. Me, a genius? No, I usually spend each day sifting through the other department's files? That was always the sort of response I gave, but I did so even more from conceit than modesty. I knew I was talented. I was confident I'd one day be exactly what everyone expected me to be and more. I wanted for nothing, not lineage, nor talent, nor affection. So many things working in, in my favor, it was easy to push myself to greater heights without leaning on my environment. Back then, I took pride in my excellence, constantly worked to further improve myself. I believe those blessed with nature, natural talent should still continue to apply themselves, should set their sights on even greater stages. I was completely convinced that there's nothing I could not do, nothing that was beyond my reach. Child crouching on bridge. For the past six months, crossing the great bridge to reach the uh, evocation, evocation, uh, evo, I don't know. Department college should become something of a routine of mine. I noticed what appeared to be beggars by the path of the opposite side, but I never gave them any thought. At the time, I didn't even see them. It wasn't that I disliked them, or that I was trying to avoid them. It was that for me, they may as well not have existed at all. As a prodigy, or to carve out a new age of magecraft, I didn't have any time to get involved with people like them. I was born into an environment far better than most could hope for, talents far greater than most could dream of. I, so I think I know a little bit about what's about to happen. I don't remember the details. That's why I had a duty to fulfill. I was going to create something beautiful, 
was going to create something wonderful. It was that ideal, that passion, that made me apply myself to my studies day in and day out. It's the reason I so frequently visited that college, even when it became arguably belonged to an enemy. I didn't realize how arrogant I was being, how childish. On that day, I was headed home later than usual. It's the middle of the night, with no one on the bridge and the stars hidden behind the clouds. Kristario woke down. What, was that bullets? A gun? Everything happened so fast I failed to react in time. That turned out to be a fatal mistake. I wasn't surprised that an assassin had been sent to try to kill someone as young as me. As me. I was surprised because my would-be assassin was a manservant I had frequently seen in my own house. I counterattacked automatically before I'd even thought about what to do, thanks to the spells that had been engraved on, onto my body. The assassin never got another chance. Vacuum blades sliced him into bits before he could pull the trigger again. But it was enough. It already critically wounded me. There's no hope of escape. Oh. See, see, I I very vaguely remember what happens. Because I don't think that was what happened. He wasn't the only assassin who had been sent to take my life. I knew because. It's done. Send out more men. Find Kristario's body. It was my father. Trying to kill his own son. Oh, the twelfth guy! He's jealous. <sighs> Fell into the river. Find him. Of course, I wasn't the one who had fallen in. It was my ring after it cast a weight alteration spell on its own. On it. I knew it wouldn't be more than enough to wouldn't do more than buy me some time, but at the moment, it's the best move I can make. After I drew the assassin's attention towards the river, I activated a footstep cancellation spell on my shoes and got as far away from them as I could. Okay. Now what do I do? My consciousness began to fade away. I went back to the bridge instead of heading to the city exit. My strength gave out just as I was making my way to the narrow back alley. At the time, I didn't yet know that my assailant's weapon was an ordinary magecraft. And there was a kind of poison, just like the sort used by a famous mage killer who was designed to attack magical circuits directly. What? I wonder who that could be. It was in a dimly lit room. Within it was nothing more than in the sound of dripping water and the scent of mildew. I was on a makeshift bed made of an old wooden crate. The bare minimum of bandaging had been applied to my back. There's no pillow, no blankets, no restraints on my arms or legs. So, like, does the Major's Association, like, stop that kind of thing? Like, if you wanted someone, would they, like, arrest his dad or kill him or something? Or would you just be like, yeah, you know, deal with the Kishario? <laughs> I, I don't know. I was technically free, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to move so much as a finger. The wound in my chest had yet to close, and I lacked the strength even to stand. Been laid under rest with no more ceremony than a corpse. Where am I? First, I thought my assassins had captured me. Then I realized they would have no reason to keep me alive. After all, since this is my own family trying to kill me, there's little sense in torturing me for information. I couldn't understand what was going on. Thoughts refused to put themselves in order. Still, just barely conscious, I managed to crane my neck enough to observe the dimly lit room. Something creepy! <laughs> Something was in the corner of the room, as if I was trying to hide from what little light there was. It was then that I noticed something strange staring directly at me. Seriously? Hey, Gadok. I just wanted to set a stop by so it doesn't look like I've been gone for two days straight. Oh, zzz. Can't believe this guy. Just basking in the sun, snoozing away on a bench without, without so much as a single guard. Hey, hey, Woldan. Don't you think it's time you got up? You are the Crypto's leader, right? Aren't you the one guy representing humanity in the power struggle be between the Olympian gods and humans? How can you just leave yourself completely defenseless like this? Come on, wake up already. Is that you, Kadok? Wait, Kadok? What are you doing here? This is my room. Never mind. No, it isn't. This is the hanging gardens of the Great Orbital Shrine Olympia. Well, <laughs> that was certainly careless of me. Sunlight was so pleasant that I didn't even realize I'd fallen asleep. I was dreaming about something I hadn't thought about in a long time. I feel very silly. 
Guess I just get too relaxed without Canis around to keep me in line. Anyway, thank you for waking me up before I could waste any more time. You don't have to thank me. I spoke up because it was weird seeing you like that. Weird? How so? Like you're not exactly the sort of guy to just doze off, off out in public. You're like perfectionism incarnate. You don't get to take naps like a typical college slacker. I see. Well, I do have some issue with the impression you seem to have of me. I also understand now why Lizzie was so surprised. I'll be more careful in the future. Now then, what is it you wish to see me about, Kadok? Do you have something to report to me? Ah, oh, crap. So, I'll uh, shut. So shocked seeing him sleeping like that, I forgot I didn't actually have anything to tell him. I can't just fib or he'll know I've been up to something. But I got it. They got Demeter. Yeah, 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 now go Nani! One of the great gods of Olympus gone just like that. It's a perfect being she turned out to be. And one more thing, a tan lancer with white hair was helping them out. And luckily, it looks like Europa didn't catch that part. So how does it feel, Wodan? As it feel knowing the loser you thought you'd disposed of is not only alive, but actively working against you now. <laughs> that is a surprise. Never would have expected Canis to go over to Caldea's side. No, he totally knows, right? This is all part of his 4D chess plan. He managed to destroy Demeter's true form. It must have been far better prepared than I thought. So a tiny rebel force managed to bring down a powerful authority figure. How very... Rock and roll! At like a guitar place. No, wait. Every metal feels more appropriate, given the composition of the guy's body. I never thought I'd hear Kirstaria say rock and roll. Uh, am I going deaf or do you just make a lame pun about music? Apologies. Perhaps I'm not quite awakened yet. Kirstaria wants Kadok to realize he's not just some perfect guy. At any rate, I'm surprised you knew something even Queen Europa did not. It almost sounds as though you are watching things unfold in person, Kadok. You must have found yourself a very good familiar indeed. <laughs> He's odd to him. He probably knows everything, right? Well, you know, can't just sit around here mooching free grub forever. Still a cryptor, after all, so I need to be ready to fight against it at least one more time. I see. Make sure you take good care of that familiar. Nice up your sleeve can mean the difference between life and death, after all. Rest assured, you don't need to tell me, the other cryptors, or anyone else in Olympus, what yours is. That said, if it should come to light that you are using something you shouldn't be, then I will unfortunately be forced to respond in whatever way is appropriate. I have my own world if I fail, after y'all. Uh, what does he know? Better change the subject fast. So, uh, by the way, about Demeter. Jodea might have been able to beat her. It still wasn't because they were straight up overpowered her. Looked to me like Demeter was looking for something. That's not right. Maybe trying to recover something. She kept apologizing over and over. Not just to the Olympian she was killing, but to one person in particular. It's the only reason they, they were able to destroy her. Any idea what she was looking for? I see. So that did hold her back? As it suspected it might. Her cute daughter, right? Persephone? I mean, come on, Persephone's gotta be a cute girl in the Nasuverse. We're totally going to summon her at one point. Just like in proper human history, this last spot's Demeter once had a daughter she loved dearly. Her name was Persephone. Said that Demeter wept long and hard after Hades stole her away into the underworld. Yet despite that, she never stopped loving her daughter. But a few thousand years ago, her daughter died during the fourth Machia. Hang on, Woldheim. That doesn't add up. I don't know if she was a full god or a demigod or what, but I thought people didn't die in this city. Not necessarily. Humans are simply incapable of killing other humans. The immortality humans enjoy in this loss, but it's not true immortality, but pseudo-immortality. The gods can easily end their subjects' pseudo-immortal lives if they wish. So the ones who killed Persephone was... One of the gods? And one of the gods from the Coexistence faction? Well, Persephone was probably on the Coexistence faction. Well, no, it was not one of them. Then... Persephone sided with the Coexistence faction, so Zeus ordered Demeter to kill her own daughter. Ah, oh, okay. That's messed up. So she was calling out to the daughter she killed. Said she was still alive, huh? Sounds almost human of her. Those gods are machines, right? How can they function properly when they're contradicting themselves like that? 
I understand your confusion, but it's precisely their machine nature that means this is no contradiction at all. Their minds don't work like ours, after all. It's the tragedy of the 12 Olympian machine gods right there. Whether gods create humans or humans create gods, both sides usually share a common understanding of the world in which they live. But the Olympians are different. They weren't gods to begin with. They only came to be defined that way over time. It was because their functions enabled them to control the weather, provide endless amounts of food, destroy various life forms' memories, and mass produce weapons. Wait, hold on, hold on. So this one's Demeter. Control the weather. Is that Zeus? Destroy various life forms' memories. Aphrodite? Mass produce weapons? Have a stasis? That led to the residents of the sauce about seeing them as gods. I don't know about the memory one. They then incorporated this definition of into their functions in order to operate more smoothly on this planet. After all, the people of the ancient world wanted superior beings they could pray to, not cold, unfeeling spaceships. So they accepted the new roles they'd been given, became mechanical gods instead of mere machines. As a result, they ended up making this god play, play acting into a new directive. All without ever understanding the intelligent beings treating them as gods actually felt. Cold and unfeeling, huh? So is that why Demeter went nuts? Because she ended up with feelings tacked onto herself when she didn't need them? This is less of a matter of contradiction than it was of conflict. Humans can rationalize, act rationalize acts like that by telling themselves there's nothing else they could have done. But she had no choice but to cheat the order to kill her own daughter like any other assigned task. She wasn't crazy. She was just in pain. That's what it means to be a god in this last belt. It's also why they're able to realize a real life utopia where nobody has to die or grow old. You know, I thought machines always operated on pure logic. Alright, if that's what the gods are like here, what's your game, old man? Your goal is to bring about the edge of gods again, right? Is that really the kind of god you want to be? Of course, God should rule the world. That being said, the future, the answer I seek, is a little different from Zeus's. What I seek, Kadok, is an even more perfect age. An age where there, where there will be no, neither conflict nor contradiction. It's my responsibility to see, the, see that age come about. And, it is what the foreign god wishes. I'm sure. So, I don't actually know, like from spoilers, but it's my understanding that Kristaria is not. His motives don't align with Zeus or the foreign god. He's going for something else. Like, I'm not completely sure of that, but I'm pretty sure. Anyway, next time, thou art the ardor that corrupts the stars. Uh, what's an ardor? I'm assuming that's relevant to whoever we're fighting next. I'm assuming Aphrodite? Or the Dioscuri. One of those. Anyways, guys. I'll see you guys next time with some more Baker and Order. It's a short one, but, you know, it's okay to have short ones. See you guys next time. Bye.